Hi, everybody. So now let's look at the symmetries of the cube. And here I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm not much of an artist. And I'm going to take advantage of a nice app uh, that I found on the web that somebody took the trouble to create. So um, here we go. So here's a cube. And you can see that a cube has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. And it has six faces. And because it's going to be important for us, I also want to point out that it has um, four diagonals. So by a diagonal, I mean, for example, a um, you go from C to F. That's a diagonal. So to the op from a from a vertex to the opposite vertex. So B to E, C to F, G to D, and H to A are the four diagonals of the cube. And um, the first thing we're going to observe is that a, the, the symmetry group of the cube. <clears throat> so let's just for the sake of argument, let's let G be the symmetries of the cube. The first thing we're going to see is that proposition that G has 24 elements. And um, the, maybe the best way to see that is to think about <clears throat> what happens when you make a symmetry of the cube. So the first thing when, that you do when you make a symmetry of the cube is you pick it up and you put it down so that one of the six faces is on top. So you have six ways to make that first move where you put one of the, if you imagine it being a die, for example, with numbers one, two, three, four, five, six on it, you if I give you a, a cube, then you can first put it down so the one is on top. But then having put it down so that the one is on top, you can still rotate it around. And there are going to be four different positions for the cube to be in uh, after you've put it down on the table. So altogether, that's 24 positions. Namely, you have to tell where the cube is, you have to say which of the six faces is on top, and then having put it on top, which one you have to say which of the uh, possible four rotations uh, of the cube is which vertex, so to speak, is closest to you. That might be one way to think about it. So those are the 24 elements. But that doesn't tell you much about the, um, the group structure. And if you think about it, um, one interesting thing that you might uh, realize is that 24 is 4 factorial. And as it happens, 4 factorial is also the order of the symmetric group on four elements. And that raises the question, is the um, group of the cube, the symmetry group of the cube, the same as the symmetric group on four elements? And in fact, it is. G is the same as S4. But to see that uh, you takes more, uh, more than I could draw. And so that's why I'm taking advantage of this app. So remember I mentioned that there are four diagonals in the cube. And if I use the, uh, the labeling here, the four diagonals are A goes to H, B goes to E, C goes to F, and D goes to G. These are the four diagonals. And what I want to do is I want to take a line which joins opposite points on the opposite uh, midpoints of side of uh, edges of the cube. So you see this is the midpoint of the of the edge from A to B. And this is the midpoint of the opposite edge from H to E. And I've chosen here the, um, the line which joins them. And now I want to ask, what happens as I rotate the cube around that axis? So I have that feature here. So I'm going to rotate the cube around that axis. And you see, to get the cube to come back into position, I have to go quite a long way. In fact, I have to go a full 180 degrees in order to get back into position. So if I do it twice, I come back 
to my original position. So let's see if we can track what happens to the vertices. So let's watch A. So as we tilt this, the vertex corresponding to A moves down, and then it moves up, and it goes to B. So the vertex A went to the vertex B, and the vertex B, let's just track just to be sure, it's better, the vertex B goes up a bit and comes back to the vertex A. So uh, this operation interchanged A and B. What if we look at another vertex? Let's look at C. So as we, as we follow C, C goes up, and then it keeps going, and it ends all the way up at F. So C goes to F, and F goes to C. If we watch B, we already did B. If we watch D, D goes all the way around to G, and then comes back to D. So we have taken account of A, B, C, D. What happened to E? Let's watch E. So E goes down and comes back to H, and H goes back to E. So E and H trade places. So this operation is a kind of a, it has order two. And what makes it interesting now is how does it, what does it do to the diagonals? Well, here are the diagonals. If A and, so what happens to A, H? A goes to B and H goes to E. So the diagonal A, H goes to B, E. And what about B, E? Well, B goes back to A and E goes back to H. So these diagonals trade places, A, H, and B, E. And if you've got a good eye, you can see that. Here's the diagonal A, H. And as we rotate it, watch A and H. They come around and they sit down at B, E. What about the other two diagonals? Where does C, F go? Well, C, F, F and C just trade places. So the diagonal turns end for end, but it stays in the same place. And similarly, the diagonal D, G, D and G trade places. So if we think about how, what happens to the four diagonals of the, um, uh, of the cube, we see that this, this particular rotation that I just described, if I label the diagonals, one, two, three, and four, then this particular, uh, this action, call it sigma, is just the permutation that exchanges one and two. Well, what about this one? What if I, instead of going from taking that, uh, that, um, that axis, I choose this one, the one which splits the line from A to D and G to H. What happens if I do the rotation there? Well, watch A. A goes to D, and D goes to A, and G goes to H, and H goes to G. So this one, A goes to D, D goes to A, G goes to H, H goes to G. The other ones, if we watch E, for example, E goes all the way up and around to B, and B goes all the way down to E. And C goes down and around to F, 
and f goes back to c. And now if we look at the diagonals, well, a and d get interchanged, so a h goes to d g, and d g goes to a h. But b e stays where it is, and c f stays where it is. And so if we, again, using the numbering of the diagonals 1, 2, 3, 4, we see that this one is the permutation 1, 4. And without belaboring this, what you can check is that using these um, reflection axes, these rotation axes, where you take the line which joins opposite points in the midpoints of opposite edges, you can get any and then doing the uh, the rotation around that point, you can get any transposition of the four diagonals. That is to say, you can fix two of the diagonals and interchange the other two. And that means all this group, the group that of, of symmetries, contains all of the transpositions. One, two, one, three, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4. And if it contains all those transpositions, that means it contains all the permutations. Because we already know that any permutation is a product of transpositions. So if you have, if you have a group which contains all the transpositions, then by multiplying those transpositions together, you can get all the permutations. And that means that you can get all of S4 inside the symmetry group of the cube. But the symmetries of the cube, have, there's only 24 of them, and there's 24 elements in S4, so they must be the same. So by this argument, we see that the symmetry group of the cube is the same as the symmetric group on four elements. But what's a little bit surprising is that the thing that it's permuting are the diagonals of the cube, which uh, is maybe not completely obvious. I'll include a link to this cool app in the notes to the course.